One moment, sorry. Tweet out in this room. Alright, so hopefully we're going to be finishing uh, the game. I know there's an epilogue and stuff, but hopefully we're going to be finishing, like, making it to the summit, and then we can see about doing an epilogue. Uh, maybe not, like, immediately, uh, but in, like, the future, I think. Because uh, I also really want to uh, do a lot more of uh, Hollow Knight, which the other game that we've been doing is kind of a series. I've really been enjoying that, and... Uh, want to continue that more. I was thinking of doing that tomorrow. That is my current idea. It's that, or seeing if I get Final Fantasy working and then streaming Final Fantasy. Uh, I think it also might be nice. Uh, so I'm going to do one of the two. But I've been a bit uh, busy and stuff, so I haven't had a chance to like sort it out properly. Uh, with like uni and everything. Just keep me a bit distracted. Oh we have double jump now. It's been a while since I played this part. No, I don't Damn. If I sound a bit like stuffed up, uh the weather's pretty miserable over here at the moment. And I just had to go outside for a while. Uh walk around campus looking for my wallet and uh, eventually go into where they found it. But yeah, hopefully, uh, depending on how long it takes to get, uh, we might have time to start, the, like, to get to the end. We might have time to start the epilogue. Uh, and I do want to do the epilogue on stream, because that's one part I haven't actually beaten. Like, even in my own free time. I made it, like, a decent bit there, but I never completed it. And so I think it might be nice. But I also want to kind of branch out with some other games and stuff that I'm looking at. I think I kind of want to do, like, Metroid or Castlevania. Uh, I know I already kind of have, like, a that style of game going with uh, Hollow Knight, but I've really been enjoying Hollow Knight stuff until I, I don't know, I think it might be nice to stream that. I don't, I don't think getting that strawberry is going to be pretty rough. Yeah, how do you even do that? Cause with only even like even with two jumps it doesn't seem that easy. Like this stuff's fairly easy. You can get here. 
but to get that you have to I guess jump like over here like that yeah it seems tough yeah so I'll leave that for like in case we ever do uh, collect all the strawberries and stuff how about that The music's a lot more fast paced, I feel, than you should. Yes. We're getting the hang of that. You see this, though? I do like how, like, these, all the areas we're traveling through replicate kind of the zones that we were in already. It makes you really feel like you're actually traveling up it again after the fall. Whereas if it was like just its own unique zone. Oh, I could have had that. I keep forgetting we have the second. Dash. So we jump off, we use that to launch ourselves up onto here, and then, oh is this literally just like the same thing but harder? Because this does seem really familiar. Oh yeah, so there's the two ways, there's the easy way up and the hard way up. Hard way we have to grab. I don't. Not sure how they want us to get there, but give it a shot. I guess that way. Kind of works. I just did that wrong. But yeah, so I'll either probably be streaming more Hollow Knight tomorrow or uh, Final Fantasy 14. Damn it. I feel like if I... I... I think there's definitely a way to... Well, actually, no, you know what would be... It might just be the easiest way? Is just holding on, letting it go back. Uh, and then you just go up this way. I don't think that's exactly what they intended. We do miss out. We do miss out on that route. So we can go back, right? Let's try let's try to get to that out right there. Okay, that wasn't that bad actually. And then for here. Yeah, this really does seem like it's the other area, except that one so, seems like a little thing. Howdy, Mani Mani. Uh, my day's been alright. Uh, pretty uneventful, except for me losing my wallet, like, an hour before stream and having to go search for that. Uh, but overall, it's been pretty good. The weather's kind of like, eh. It was worse t yesterday when it was raining. Uh, but today, it's alright.
Yeah, I found it. Uh, well, I didn't find it, uh, but I'm at a uni, and so someone picked it up uh, and returned it. Uh, and so I just had to go uh, to like the desk. Uh, fortunately, I like they found it in time, because uh, if I didn't get it today, uh, I would have had to wait till Monday. Which, considering that has my, uh, yeah, replacing all the stuff is bad, and if they, like, if they'd found it after, like, later today or tomorrow, and brought it in, I might not have been able to get it, uh, because, uh, it, like, closed down, basically, uh, after tonight until Monday, and since that has my, uh, cards, and also, uh, my food, like my student card for the cafeteria and stuff uh, that would have kind of sucked yeah fortunately it all worked out and there also wasn't any money missing which is pretty lucky but you'd think I would be doing better at this considering it's like only one jump, not even. Finally. Yeah. It's the second time that I've uh, lost my wallet. Though I'm not sure how I lost it to this time. Uh. Missing money, we're moving. Uh, I wasn't moving, right? I just had some money, uh, in there, uh, like, that I'd been lazy and hadn't deposited stuff. Uh, uh, some of it was in, like, uh, euros, I think, which is, uh, probably in part, well, Perhaps why some of it was like all of it was still there uh, because I went to Europe over uh, like in January and so I still had some from that. But yeah, it all worked out in the end and uh, yeah, so I'm pretty lucky. So like this is like this the second time. Uh, the first time was actually just in my residence building. I just left it on the laundry machine uh for like a few hours uh and then <laughs> ended up just finding it when i went to like pick my laundry up uh fortunately it was still there and uh i'm frankly a bit surprised that nothing was taken either times to be honest but it's kind of weird that it, it ended up on like the side of the campus today is that I don't go to so I'm guessing that uh, the person who found it was heading over there or something or because I hadn't been near that part of campus for like uh, for a while I don't really go over there and it's since I definitely had it like an hour before it got reported uh, then I'm um, yeah I mean, I wasn't, like, near there, so I'm not sure how I got over there, but... Fortunately, it all worked out. But yeah, losing a lot of time is good. Yeah, I'm all right with losing things. I can lose things like in a, like in my room or something. I lose things really like easily, and like I don't. If you ask me where like anything is in there, I don't know where it is. Uh, but generally, if I'm like outside or something, I'll be like overly paranoid that I'm gonna lose it, and so I actually won't like end up losing stuff. Because I'll be like, uh, too, like, hyper aware of where, uh, 
like my wallet or phone is and stuff. Though not in this case. So I'm not making a great case for myself. But yeah. Normally it's alright. My sister on the other hand loses things all the time. Bless her soul. Which is normally fine, uh, except when she doesn't tell anyone. Uh, and then it can be a bit of a bit of a problem. And sometimes I, I get to have to be a bit complicit and stuff, especially when we were kids, because uh, I don't want her to get in trouble for it either. And so I don't want to be the one who snitches. But yeah. It's always like things that like you can't like hide or missing forever either is the funny part. Cause like a wall or something, especially when they're a kid, like not uh, like she's not that much younger than me, but still like young enough. Where like generally you can't really replace that by yourself. Oh this one's good. Uh yeah. But she still tries to like keep it hidden and stuff. Though to be fair, I mean, I keep stuff hidden as well. Like, uh, when I like mess up and that kind of thing. So I can't blame her. Do, it as, do as I say, not as I do, you know? That was... Really awkward. I really like the tonal shift of the music they got now. It feels very different than like the music at like the start. Oh, I almost had that one. Yeah, I hope all your days are, like, everyone else's days going all. And they all have a good weekend ahead. Yeah, I think I was mentioning that, like, a bit early at the start. Is I really like how, uh... I really like how it... This, like the setting changes it's not just like a new area it's like a combination of the previous areas because it really makes you feel like it's like you're going up rather than just like you're having a kind of, you're on a new path like if you're on a new path or whatever was the plan then it wouldn't uh, feel the same it would just feel like just just another area rather than like achieving your goal and it's nice it feels like it makes it, it gives you a sense of like you're doing really well because you're going to like places that resemble uh, the areas that you already. God, that was awful. And that was so. But it, it makes you feel like uh, you progressed a lot because you're going through areas that you like may have found challenging at the beginning, and now you're because it's so much faster paced. Uh, like you're generally beating them faster oh I bet there was a there was a strawberry in that big block and I could have broken that damn yeah so I really like how like they designed this part of it especially yeah it does a really good job encapsulating the themes and the game plan I was on I think the music as well like overall Yeah, I think indie games in general just tend to have like much be do a much better job at like uh, encapsulating their themes. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. As you said.
Well, it's not for that strawberry for a time. Yeah, they have the soul. That's yeah, that's the best way to put it. For sure. Oh, I was so close. Yeah, like in triple A games these days, they just don't really You'd think for the price tag that they're costing, they'd have a bit more soul to it, but doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, it just like nicked me. Like there's still some like higher like triple A, not higher end, but like larger studio games. Uh, that have like a good amount of soul and stuff into it. I say refer to what on. But like it's it feels like it's getting slimmer every year to be honest. Which can be pretty disheartening. Especially because I feel like a lot of AAA games and stuff have really good, like... They do a good job coming up with a concept for, like... Oh, a game and, like, a a world and stuff and do a decent job world building but they always like fail on the follow through I guess if that makes sense It's hard because I, I like I I think I'm generally like I do really like a lot of triple games and so I'm probably a bit less critical than most on them. I like a lot of my favorite games are like triple and stuff. I really like like Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, Titanfall 2, uh, like God of War and stuff. Uh, like the recent ones. I haven't had, unfortunately had a chance to play like the older God of Wars and stuff, unfortunately. Uh, and so I'd say I generally play, and have played in the past when I was younger, more triple A stuff. And so I definitely have a bit of bias there, but like it's so hard like seeing nowadays. How, because I mean some of them are still pretty good. Uh, like I still, like with the newer like Assassin's Creed, they feel different, but they don't, I don't feel like they feel bad. Like I don't think they're bad games. But like for the price tags that they're all starting to like charge, I just don't think it's generally worth it anymore. It's the big difference. Whereas like with indie games, is generally you are getting your money's worth for what you're paying. That's kind of like my opinion of it. The some triple A games could charge me basically like anything, and I wouldn't buy it. Like Titan, if they released a Titanfall three, like just complete, like I would buy that in a heartbeat. Like 100, 200, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be happy about it, but I will definitely be buying it. to create triple A games is so massive I think it's inevitable to get water down creatively yeah I mean personally I don't find like I find like creatively a lot of them do like a decent job 
like Horizon Zero Dawn and stuff, I think creatively, like it's pretty good. Like the concept's pretty cool. I think it does a decent job portraying it. Like, I mean, it's robot dinosaurs you get to fight with the bow, and like the world's pretty good. Uh, the dialogue and stuff, I mean, it's not great. Uh, but overall, like I think, it, like creatively, it's pretty decent. But it's just like it's it's a bit pricey and stuff, and I think that's part of like the over, like I think it's the overhead is just to make what is considered like good at this point is I think our I think it's part of the overhead is definitely a big issue. I think also standards for games have risen uh, a lot, which isn't like a bad thing. I mean, I like I'm not gonna complain about wanting better games I think that's a reasonable thing to want uh, but I think it's definitely a tribute like contributed to why we have uh, more why we're more critical of like newer games and stuff which is kind of why personally I'm finding I'm generally more critical of like franchises that don't change like try and change like I feel like Call of Duty was a really good example where like a lot of the games, like, felt the same for a very long time, up until Modern Warfare 2019, uh, which was a decent game. Like, I played it a fair bit with friends and stuff. It's fine. But it, like, at least it, I liked it mainly because it just felt different. But now it seems like, like, Cold War was basically that again, and they're kind of falling into the old tricks of just repeat the game every couple years. I think like any franchise that does that kind of loses my respect. God of War is a great, yeah, Graves Emblem of Change working, yeah. I haven't played, I can't, God of War is one where I can't really opine too much because I've only played 2018, but I really like that a lot. I wish it was, if they like got it onto PC or if I ever, I, I, I could figure out emulation, I'm just kind of lazy. Uh, But, yeah, since I'm planning on figuring out Metroid and stuff, possibly for streams, I'll probably look into emulation a bit more. And so, who knows? Go to... I, but I definitely... Uh, God of 2018... Is, yeah, 2018 is on PC, which is why I played it. Uh, but I haven't played the other ones, because they're not on there. Uh, so I can't really talk about the change, but it like, it is, like... For a, like, AAA game, it's just, it seems, it would, like, it's, the f new one seems really good, the old one seemed good as well, uh, like, I've seen playthroughs and stuff of them, and I really enjoyed 2018, I think it's, like, one of the top AAA games I've played, I would say, uh, though I find it uh, just kind of hard to, like, categorize it, like, say, because there's, like, a fair few that I personally enjoy because I definitely, like I said, I have like a bit of a bias after playing so many like only triple A games really for such a long time. I have like an attachment to a lot of series like Assassin's Creed and stuff. This is a really good example for me where I really like Assassin's Creed even though like I think the series as a whole is kind of mixed now. Uh, yeah, but like, I yeah. So God of War is really good, and I think that like, if it, I mean, it seems like it's a pretty substantial departure from the previous games, but it seems like it's a departure that's worked really well. What I've also really, uh, what I've also really, I think, found interesting is, or unfortunate for me, is a lot of the games that I've really liked, I feel like, I've kind of didn't get the love that I feel like they deserved, or just kind of, like, happened at the wrong, like, wrong place, wrong time type of thing. Titanfall, great example. I think it's, like, one of the best, act no, it's definitely the best FPS game, uh, I've ever played. Definitely my favorite, uh, probably my favorite game of all time. Uh, and I don't really like FPS that much. 
Like I play, like I played a fair bit of COD and all that stuff as a kid. Uh, that's kind of just because I mean it was COD and like that was kind of the thing to do. And I like me and my dad would play it and stuff. But I don't really have like a strong attachment to the genre. Uh, but like that, F, like Titanfall 3, 2, uh, I think was really good. Uh, and it just kind of came out like wrong place, wrong time, and I uh, didn't find like any success really uh, because of that. Uh, and I think uh, Horizon Zero Dawn again came out like just at a bad time uh, with really strong competition, and so I didn't really see as much success. And I think also I'm not sure because I didn't keep up with uh, Forbidden West as much. Uh, because it's not coming to PC for a while, uh, so I didn't like. I only really cared that it existed and that it would eventually come to PC, hopefully. Uh, but I heard it also came out at not a great time, which it was around Elden Ring, right? Which I would not want to be competing against Elden Ring in like as a video, as like a triple A game. There's like no way you come out looking good on that if you like, except God of War Ragnarok, I think. Yeah. Uh, so I feel like those are like two like franchises that I feel like just didn't get their chance to shine. Makes me pretty sad. Though Apex Legends, I like. I, I don't really like the battle royale genre at all. And I'm kind of sad that Apex gets like all the fame from the franchise. But it kind of does give me like a bit of hope that we will get it eventually. Another Titanfall 3. And I know that's just really just me coping really hard. But I just, I just gotta believe. Uh, I just gotta believe that Apex is gonna allow us to get another Titanfall game. Yeah. <laughs> Copium Fall Three. Yeah. It's I I gotta believe like I if we we like they gotta make like it's Apex is so successful like they've gotta make like another like the game in the French right right like it's 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 gotta happen eventually. <laughs> Like, if they announced they were doing it, like, Warzone, where they had, like, the Battle Royale, like, a big focus on Battle Royale stuff, and then they also have it, like, connected with an FPS game, I would be so happy, you have no idea. Like, I would... God, I would... Oh, that would be amazing. Even though, like, again, I'm not, like, a big Battle Royale fan or anything, I probably wouldn't play that as much. Uh, I don't really play Apex. I don't mind Apex out of all the Battle Royals, but I don't really play it. But if it meant... If it, if they told me, like, if you play a thousand hours of Apex, and that means, like, Titanfall 3 comes out, I would be only playing Apex for, like, the next, like, year at least. Like, you know, sacrifices have to be made. Though, on the other hand, as much as I like, like, I think, like, there also is something to be said for not overdoing, like, a franchise and stuff. So, beyond, like, Titanfall 3, like, a Titanfall, if you get, start getting into, like, Titanfall 4 whatever potential like hypothetically that I feel like you kind of hit the cod problem where it's just too many games and you just can't make them high quality enough if you're doing them too fast uh, and that's like something I think like is inherited from like TV shows primarily where like you get a bunch of seasons of a show and it keeps getting renewed because it has good ratings or whatever but then you just can't keep up that success really forever and I think you kind of bleed the goodwill of the franchise dry 
if you try and do that. That's why for like some of the series, like I think probably one of my favorite uh, shows, uh, Castlevania. Uh, really, really good show. Not a hu always a huge fan of Netflix, but they did damn well on that, I will say. And I'm super excited for the like other series that they're doing, Castlevania Nocturne. Uh, but that, that Castlevania, the show, had four seasons. I think that's a good amount. I think if they tried to like make more than four, if they tried to like expand it, which I guess they're kind of trying to do with the new series, but it's a bit different because like it's specifically set different character, different time period and stuff. I think that's like a much better way to continue it. Oh yeah, different studio did Castlevania. Netflix was just the producer. Yeah. I know, like, they didn't do, like, all the work and stuff. I just, I can't remember specifically what studio did it. And so I'm kind of just referencing Netflix as well, because they, like, help produce it and stuff. Uh, yeah. But I think, like, it's a good example of, like, they had, like, I'm, I, I would imagine it from what, like, watching and stuff. It seems like they had, like, an overall plan for the first two seasons. They saw it say it saw success and stuff and so they were able to like expand it for another two and then they kind of ended it there in like a good place uh where theoretically they probably could have stretched it out for longer uh seasons if they wanted to uh not to try like i'm not trying to spoil anything to or anything uh but like they kind of probably realize that if you do that, it's just not going to be as good. Because uh, I think like with a lot of shows and stuff, uh, like The Office, like Parks a lot of like the sitcom shows suffer that problem of uh, they just get too long. Uh, and like I, I mean I find those funny, but like there's only so many episodes of like a comedy show you can do before the jokes are going to get a bit stale and the comedy is just going to start to go away. Uh, and so I think the best way to like remedy that is to re like do is keep the universe like of a show, but like set it differently, which is how they're doing Castlevania Nocturne. Uh, kind of how Wet Apex is, where it's a bit different because they uh, they kind of saw Titanfall wasn't really working, like it wasn't as successful, uh, and so they kind of pivoted to a different uh, genre of game and stuff uh, but like the same concept is there of like keep with it within the universe but make it like a distinct entity uh, and then that like maintains the goodwill and stuff of of the like franchise though of course there are still problems with that of uh, taking a franchise and making like a distinct uh, thing out of it uh, and there are plenty of examples of that uh, particularly with like show adaptations and stuff I forgot this these weren't the bubbles that make, go on forever until they hit something oops But yeah, obviously, like, Velma and stuff, example of taking a franchise and, like, uh, rebooting it or putting it into a different, like, setting, uh, while keeping, like, the overall world, kind of. Though, it's, they didn't do, like, they obviously didn't really try to keep, uh, the world the same in Velma, which is part of why I think it just sucks. Uh... Yeah, I know. Hot take: per streamer thinks Velma isn't like that great overall. That's an understatement of my opinion of it. But uh, there are like other examples. Uh, the Witcher stuff. First season I heard was pretty good, but like uh, I know Cavill uh, ended up leaving because he wasn't happy with the direction it's going. I feel like. That generally seems like a pretty good indicator, because uh, he knows his stuff when it comes to like nerdy topics like this. So if he doesn't really approve, I kind of have 
like it. Like I mean, I would tend to like believe him. Does that makes sense. Yeah. I'm kind of a bit torn with like all like the reboots of franchise and stuff. Cause generally my like opinion uh, of things is I I like it when like a show takes the universe uh, and like make new derivative like content out of it. Not derivative in a bad way, just like uh, content based off it and stuff. Like uh, with the I don't know like how many people know about this, but because I'm big into like D and D and stuff, was sure. like with the OGL, one of the big issues was that it was for like the open game license for oh, the new one that was proposed by Wizard of the Coast. That one of the problems uh, was it was more restrictive on like content, uh, like homebrew content and content uh, on D and D and stuff. Uh, which I would disagree with, not because I think, like, I understand where they're coming from at uh, Wizards. They, like, do, I understand they need, need to make money and want to make money and stuff. Uh, and having the policy allowing, like, free reign for homebrew content and stuff is not making them money in the slightest. Uh, but I feel like there are better ways to do it, and I think it's, like, partnering with, uh, like those homebrew stuff like they did uh, for those of you who are interested in the day, this is only really relevant to you guys so apologize if you're not uh, this is kind of just me rambling about special interests and going on tangents about it but uh, Critical Role was a really famous uh, D&D series uh, and they basically for all intents and purposes are like became partnered with uh, the creators of D&D and were able to like uh, work with them and release like content based off of their uh, show and everything and I think that's like the perfect way for the creators of D&D to like be making money is working with uh, like that fan made content basically and then like negotiating uh, like equal agreements between uh, the creators of D&D and those fans. The Wizards problem is that 3rd and 3.5 got big because they allowed third parties to make contact. Now that content, now that D&D is popular, they want to cancel that bargain. Yeah, and I think that's a big problem with, like, that's just part of how 5th uh, edition got big. It's just, like, it was the same thing. It also got big because it was, like, it's generally a bit easier to get into. Yeah. Uh, actually, I really want to talk about. It, so, if you mind if I'm just gonna pause and we just do a bit of just chatting on this? Because I mean, I, this is something I'm very. Uh, yeah, I mean, it means a lot to me because I'm like a massive player of D and D uh, and stuff, and so I feel like I have a lot to say, and I don't want to be trying to balance that and play. Uh, but yeah, so the problem is got allowed third parties to make contact. Now, D and D platform want to cancel the bargain. Yeah, I think that's generally the problem is. And I don't think that it's an unfair desire for wizards to be want to make money. Like I can understand where they're coming from, uh, and I sympathize with that. I just think that the best way for them to be making it is not to be limiting on what third parties can make. Instead, be focusing on partnering with those third parties to like basically, as uh, you're saying, off being put a lot of money to marketing it with yeah like marketing it uh with those stuff creating shows movies etc about that uh, third party content creating uh books like D, D books about that content uh and also dice uh and minis and all that stuff i think they would make more money if they invested in focusing on that as their primary stuff as instead of specifically the rule books because generally, I don't think the rule books are going to be the best way for wizards to make money. And I think that by that's like the big focus seems to be to me by trying to limit third parties to make contact is content is basically, well, we're 
want to use it for our books instead, uh, which I just don't think is the right way. Because most people are not really going to buy the books because you can find online sources that of them. Uh, personally, I've buy a, I've bought a lot of the books. Yeah, everyone buys the rule books, anyways. Exactly. I personally uh, I've been way too into D and D, and basically am a D and D. Uh, whale using like MMO terms at this point uh, and I own almost all the fifth edition books uh, up to probably like a year ago uh, when I got a bit busier and uh, had a hard time keeping track of it and stuff uh, so I own at least one copy of like almost every fifth edition D&D book uh, but that's all like physical stuff uh, not a uh, lot in D&D beyond uh, but even I still uh, sometimes use online resources uh, for it uh, because it's just convenient. Now, I like personally for me how I justify it to myself is I already paid for the books, so it's fine if I use it because even if I don't have them on hand at any given time, I already spent money on it. But I also don't really care if someone else does it, even if they haven't bought it. Like I like it's that's fine by me. I don't like. I don't have a strong opinion on the piracy of D&D books. I think it's fine because I think the way that it, they should be trying to make money is like dice, miniatures, and all that. Uh, and I think that trying to make money exclusively through the books is going to lead to lower quality like releases of rule books and uh, adventures and stuff. Uh, because it's going to lead to more frequent releases of those. Because if they're trying to make money off that, they're going to want to release as many as possible. Which is just going to inherently cause them to be like not as high quality as before. Uh, yeah, I think they've they've seemed to be p focusing on pushing like D and D beyond calculator and character creator and stuff. I've tried using that. I haven't spent any money on that. I don't think. Uh, maybe like I got a description like a couple years ago. I can't really remember. Uh, but it to me it seems like even out of the options of character creators and calculators and maps and stuff it doesn't seem that great like it doesn't seem to have a lot besides it being like the official kind of online way to do it yeah good website but overhyped that was basically my like experience with it uh so i can't imagine like wailing a thousand i think i wish it would be so great uh if they could make it so that i could put my books that i have bought in paper uh, onto there. That would be super convenient and great. Uh, but no, sadly, I cannot, and that makes me very sad because I have spent way too much on the books, and uh, so I can't really use them on D and D Beyond. So I don't really use D and D Beyond uh, part a lot because of that. Uh, instead, I'll just use like the online resources and then just an online mapping tool that's free. But yeah, I think yeah. So I think like dice and stuff is really feels like the best way to sell it or like shows and stuff like there was a critical role box not gonna show on Netflix recently there's the D&D &D movie coming up uh, though that's getting people uh, boycotting that uh, because of the open game license I don't know if that's still being planned because D&D kind of walked back on that uh, but I'm not so I'm not 100% sure whether they're still continuing I imagine there's still a few people probably planning on continuing uh, for me that kind of seemed a bit silly always to be honest because like personally with my stance of wanting them to focus more on making their money through shows dice minis uh games etc rather than the books themselves uh by boycotting like a movie you're indicating that making more movies is not going to be that profitable because people don't really want to see it and so like i'm not saying we need to like spend extra on the movie to like uh, get them to make more instead I think that's also kind of silly because it it's like it's just a difficult situation to be in but I think overall boycotting it is not the best method uh, in this specific case at least because it just kind of shows to them like we spent all this money on a movie it didn't make that much uh, we're not gonna do that again what other options do we have to make money well we still have these books that we're selling I guess we should just keep focusing on trying to make money on those. 
uh, which I don't think is the best for the, like the health and future of uh, D and D and homebrew stuff. Uh, yeah, that's like my overall. It sounds like you're in an abusive relationship with Hasbro. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, pretty much. It's kind of how it is, and it's kind of also a bit awkward to me because I've personally had very positive experiences with D and D and with Wizards of the Coast specifically. Actually, like uh, I have been fortunate enough to actually get to visit uh, the headquarters of D and D. Uh, a couple, it was uh, 2018, I want to say. Uh, I can't remember the specific date. I was uh, at one of the packs. Uh, events uh and i basically just sent i was like a young teen at the time so, like uh, i can't remember the exact age uh which probably helped uh, getting to go visit there basically just wrote up an email like hey i'm a really big fan can i go visit your headquarters and stuff uh and they're like uh sure thanks for writing us sounds good uh and they were all and like so i have like personally very good experiences with which of the coast the people that work there uh and like i've not had a negative experience and stuff and when visiting there they're all great uh and everything but also i really am starting to disagree with a lot of stuff they're doing so it's kind of like it feels a bit like kind of it can be hard to like balance that if that makes sense you know because like while i generally have good experiences with the company overall uh, uh you know other people definitely have not and uh yeah but yeah i've been like a big D 5e fanboy for like uh i want to say like it's getting close to probably eight years now i feel like uh like i said i've almost yeah i mean that's like yeah the visiting them actually was not something i talked about like too much outside of like my D, &D circles uh because you know generally saying i'm such a big nerd that i went to the headquarters of this of this one of the biggest uh rpg games yeah, I had a fun time at Disney World, but it doesn't mean I have to like everything to do with Star Wars, yeah. I think that's fair. Uh, it's just, I want to see them succeed because I really like the game, but also I think that some of the decisions they're making are just worse without the game. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to say it without, like... That's the best way to say it. I think... Like, overall, it's just they've had, like, such uh, a positive, like, influence on my life that it, d it just it feels awkward being hypercritical of them. Uh, but there are, is stuff to be, like, critical about, I think. Uh, and I, so I think it's good that with, like, the D&D, &D, uh, like, the license uh, situation stuff, it was, I think it's very good that we actually like the community was able to push back and get them to run it back and stuff as for how long that lasts i don't know if it will last forever hopefully it will probably not uh that's just kind of the way things go but uh even like if it's a temporary thing it kind of shows that they are at least still listen willing to listen to the community uh, which is not something you can say about everything. Yeah, you can criticize company or person while being calm without going full anti. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's like I think as start as soon as you start like not being calm and like just a criticism or an argument or anything, then that you you're kind of just losing inherently. That's kind of like just there's no good way it's it's very difficult nigh on impossible to have like a good argument and make good like points in an argument if you aren't like c calm and fairly collected uh, and even if you do make good points they just aren't going to be like uh displayed 
because people aren't gonna listen to it because you don't sound calm, you like it damage and stuff. I ho I'm hoping I'm like at least explaining my stance decently because I know I personally like public speaking and stuff is not my strong suit uh, at all. In fact, generally in school and stuff, I would do literally like everything possible to uh, everything possible to like avoid those types of speeches and stuff. I had a teach here tabletop RPG group where GM was a huge D&D anti, made some good points as rant, but got tiresome about he, how he would nag every time Masbro did something. Yeah, I think I was probably definitely on the, I would say, yeah, not, I was probably definitely on the opposite end of like being too much of a D&D &D fan initially. Uh, like, uh, and as I got more, as I got older, just a bit more like aware of things and f got a better understanding of uh, things in general, D and D specifically, uh, and that kind of thing. I think I got uh, kind of uh, mellowed out, so to speak. Uh, but I think it like the <laughs> yeah. I think I think for like I I don't think I could be like a, a bit anti of like. A video game stuff or like a, just a game in general I feel like it's because like by it being successful enough for like me or for most people to have heard about it it's got like some good things going for it generally like basically inherently uh, for pretty much everything I would say I feel like there's a few exceptions to that but that's the general rule uh, so I, I mean and I don't think that like I can like dislike something a lot, but like hating something for that being like an anti, I think is just like it feels so like an extreme that's not like worth the effort. Uh, especially in like tabletop RPGs where there's just there's so many good options if you don't like that specific one. Like I've mainly focused with D and D, particularly 5e, uh, but like there are so many. There's very different games within the different editions of the indie. I have played a bit of 3.5. Uh, I have some books on fourth. I have some actually, uh, one of the stuff I got from a friend of my dad's, uh, who was a big nerd, I got like second edition AD&D books, uh, which are also very different from like the rest of D&D. Uh, very goddamn confusing. I cannot like, I'm still tr struggling to understand how they work. But the point is that even within D and D itself, there's like very different experiences you can have with the games. So if you don't like one, you can try a different edition, and if you don't like any of them, you can try like a different RPG. Call of Cthulhu, I've heard is really good. I always wanted to try that. Uh, I don't remember the specific like name for the system, but there's the ones with the D sixes. Uh, they have like, they have, like uh, three or four like attributes. Uh, generally, it's like uh, I think like plus one. Plus, you get like plus one, plus zero, minus one, like in depending on like that kind of thing. Uh, I know they use it for uh, Night Witches, which is a one based off of the female Soviet pilots in World War Two. I only know that one because uh, I played that at a summer camp when I was a kid, which was really fun, and I've been dying to play that again. Uh, one day, one day. Oh yeah, and there's like I think there's a Star Wars one too. Uh, there's the superhero one. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but that one seems really interesting. Uh, there's just so many great options that like being an anti of a specific one just seems like such a wasted effort. And it's the same thing with video games, really. Like there's so many good video games that like being basing like a substantial portion of what you're talking about or your experience in the genre of video games or tabletop game stuff on like just hating one specific game just seems like such a waste when you could just like it's make it like you could just enjoy your time with a different one like for any of my hot if i were to like i guess these are all like hobbies to me and stuff so obviously uh and if i were to like I, I, I have a hobby so that I can enjoy it. Like, I don't have it so that I can, like, hate 
a specific part of it. Like I just, I, it's really hard for me to like fathom that. Uh, and maybe that's just because like that's how like special interest and stuff for me works, uh, like in hyperfixations and that kind of thing. Uh, and so maybe it's different for other people. I can't really say, but like that's just kind of my opinion of like I play this, I play these for fun. Why would I like just rag on this game or this even end? Especially like uh, if you're such a big anti, you're probably not playing that game if you're playing in the genre so even more uh so why do you like why do you have to bring it up then just talk about the game that you're playing and focus on that game and maybe a couple others that you're interested in playing and that kind of thing yeah you don't want to play a game to have fun you want to one-up people and arguments to be better than them but you can do the fun part of that is you can still do that in the game that you like you're interested in stuff like and I feel like, I guess, well, I guess, like, by being an anti in a game, you're kind of spending enough time and energy focusing on that game that you are going to, like, learn about it, like, know thine enemy type of thing. Uh, uh, yeah, like, playing ironically, learning about it ironically, that kind of thing. Uh, and so I guess you get to one-up people in arguments and stuff, kind of. But, like, just focus on the game that you're interested in. Do that in the game that you're interested in, really, is kind of, like, my stance. Uh, and hopefully you can have fun at the same time. <laughs> have too get good of taste to enjoy playing games. One does not simply play a game. You must experience the game. And only then can you just nag on people about how bad their taste is in games and stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, my, like, generally, my stance on video games and games in general is just playing it for fun, primarily. Uh, which is why I can sometimes struggle a lot with, uh, like, competitive-focused games, uh, and also rage games and stuff. Like, um, getting over it and Jump King uh, are, like, pretty hard for me. I've tried both of them a bit, uh, Jump King more. Uh, and they're pretty difficult because like it I just at a certain point doesn't really feel as fun And so like why do I play it and take a break and stuff? Uh, but like for those types of things like Like just focus on the games that you're playing and you don't have to really Be the best at arguments be the best at that game if you're just having fun, right? Like I play a lot of Hearts of Iron 4 which is a grand strategy game Am I good at the game? No, absolutely not. I generally play on an easier difficulty. I just play for fun. I like seeing what happens in the world if I just play as like a smaller country like Albania, Romania or something and just kind of just chill in the game and see what happens. It's probably, it's not the correct way to play. It's not the best way to play, but it's like, it's just a fun way to play. And I think that if you're playing in such a way as to have fun, that's kind of the overall best thing. Uh, which is why, like, and even in like competitive, more competitive games and stuff, I think it is still possible to do. And I think it is, in my experience, still the best way to play those type of games, like FPS games, like Call of Duty, uh, is a really good example because I played that a fair bit, like I mentioned, uh, with family, with friends and stuff. Uh, and I know that there generally is like a meta for like those games, particularly like the recent ones where like technology and uh, forums and all that kind of stuff to make it easier for it to spread. But personally, I've had the most fun and enjoyment when I'm just making like a fun like challenge to myself. Like I'm going to use the crossbow. I'm going to use the knife only, basically, even though I'm not that great with either of them, and it's going to be like a challenge or whatever. Or, like, I'm going to be using, like, the shotgun and stuff uh, in, like, Warzone, where it's, like, big open maps and a focus on snipers and that kind of thing. I think by, it's better to, like, enjoy games that way, in my opinion, than to, like, focus on, like, being the best of the game, especially so that you can load it or over the others. That's just, like, that kind of just screams insecurity for me, which is a bit ironic, as I'm an extremely insecure person overall but at least i'm at least i know like in that regard I, i'm self-aware i feel like 
in that aspect. Like, I don't need to be better at people in the game if I'm having fun at the game. Uh, yeah. Not to say, I, I think there are some games that I'm pretty competitive at. Uh, Magic the Gathering uh, Arena, I was really competitive at for a long time. Uh, and I played a lot of it competitively, like, on and off, but, like, for a fair bit, and I spent a lot of money on it, uh, and I do regret that a lot, uh, it was way too much money, don't want to think about it, and haven't counted, because, god, that would wreck nightmares on my, uh, mental health if I did, uh, but, like, I can recognize that that's not the best way to approach it, is by being so competitive that, like, uh, because what happened is I would have like a top tier deck in the game at the time uh, because I was playing it competitively and stuff and and so when like friends and stuff who also played wanted to like play and just enjoy the game stuff uh, I had like all of the decks that I had were like higher end stuff and I'd kind of actually what is what the worst thing was that I'd gotten to the point where it was difficult for me to like build and I was having trouble playing unefficiently which made it hard to make like a balanced deck uh, and have and play against them in a balanced manner uh, which just made it not fun for them because I was like having trouble like not playing overpowered stuff or just like kind of steamrolling them in that regard and it made it not fun for me because my friends weren't having fun and uh like obviously that's gonna be a great bit of tension and stuff and it's just not like a great experience so like i think if you, like doing anything to win in a game or an argument or anything it's just it seems such like a bad way to approach life is my overall point <laughs> Uh, and I apologize, I've been rambling a fair bit here, but it's just kind of, I don't know, I feel like, like, this, this kind of, like, psychology of people and sociology of, like, how society works and that kind of thing, it's just, it's really interesting, uh, I find it, and so I like talking about it and stuff, so if you hear me ramble with this kind of thing, and, like, this kind of topic, uh, it's like a pseudo-special interest for me, like, where I can, like, uh, talk about like it and the philosophy and stuff with it for like a fair bit and just get lost in my own world there Yeah, TCG suck for balance old school board games seem better. Yeah, and I think that's another part of like being particularly with video games and stuff when you're in a competitive video game uh, Which is gonna have like new releases balance changes uh, patches and all that stuff is It just kind of sucks when those happen like it's not like an enjoyable thing when, for example, in Magic Gathering, my deck rotates out or it gets nerfed to Oblivion uh, or something like that. Or, uh, like, they change the gun in Call of Duty so it does less damage. Or now, you know, like, grinding that gun to the top levels to have all the attachment stuff, what was the point? It just kind of, it really just, it just feels miserable. Uh, and so I, that how has probably helped further my like opinion and stance that it's just not a good way to approach gaming in general is in that competitive aspect and it's kind of probably pushed me in general towards favoring like single player games uh and that kind of thing uh where it's, like it does you where you have a bit more freedom to like just like mess around have fun and not like have the urge to be like i need to be better than everyone else because it's bots uh and if you really want that feeling you can turn down the difficulty or whatever and that kind of thing yeah especially with partic it's a particularly big problem with tcgs i think because to keep up you have to spend money and uh so when they nerf something uh, you have to spend money to, to kind of rebuild your deck or whatever. Uh, and so that almost gives them an incentive 
to change things so that you spend more money. Uh, and I'm not saying specifically that they do that, because uh, I don't know, and uh, I yeah, I just don't know if they do. Uh, but it, it like it does give them like that is like a big motivation for them if they were to want to do that uh, and it makes it like feel worse almost when you see them release patches because you're like are these like actually because it makes it it, feel, it makes it feel more justified uh, that it doesn't need to change I think because it's like, well, they're just doing this for the money, because I'm going to have to buy more stuff later. Because of this, where it's like, it's, it's fine. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's always the case. I think, like, a lot of times, they do need balances and stuff, because the other way that they make money is they release cards that are very good, uh, that people will buy. And so, you know, like, they're also incentivized to just power creep the game. Which is also not healthy for the game, but uh, it's just kind of one of those things, I guess, where you can't do anything about it because that's what it takes to keep the game alive. But that's overall kind of what's contributed to me having like on and off periods of playing like games like Magic the Gathering and, and like basically any game that I fi I find myself becoming more competitive and stuff in I generally end up taking like a break of at least a few months and stuff between uh, playing it because I just don't find it's for the best and it kind of just it's I it ends up not being fun I don't know how we got from D&D &D to like uh, TCGs and stuff uh, and like competitiveness in games and that kind of thing but yeah. I think it's also like uh, going back a bit to like the one one upping people's argument stuff. I think it's also really bad in TCGs uh, because it's very easy to be like, well, this is actually the optimal move because of this. And uh, a lot of people, like myself, when I was playing competitively, you get very focused on playing optimally because that's the best way to win and stuff. Uh, and so it can lead to wanting to, sometimes with the intent of just helping out other players by telling them how to play Optimate, but it also generally does not come off as that. Uh, and so it, it kind of makes a more toxic environment and community, I feel like. Yeah. I think I've kind of said my piece on this, and uh, I should continue on through this, as I do want to try and finish it uh, before I end stream. Sorry if you had to get, like, got, didn't enjoy listening to like my super long tangent on that. How do we, okay, so you have to go down here, oh, then go, oh, that's going to be annoying. That's, oh, that's. Oh, 
Oh god. I have to activate that first. Oh god. It really is gonna be miserable, huh? I do feel like I'm getting the hang of, uh, I was going to say that's slipping through there uh, a bit better. Finally, but I'm just getting a bit worried to be honest. Okay, you can definitely get that. If only you could get it just through making it up there. Really feels like this. Considering how much time was spent on like the just chatting parts, uh, it's focused. No, I'm so This strawberry seems slow too.
sure. I can't tell if this stuff's actually easier or if it just feels easier because of that goddamn section earlier. Oh, you can't give up now. We're almost there. I think. I don't remember how far we have left to go. Yeah, this section isn't the easiest, um, but it's better than, it still, I f it still feels so far better than that, uh, 
goddamn section with like the um, the one I had to like grab the back of and all that. Oh, that was... That was. No, oh, that will haunt me. I probably messed up there by having two dashes. Yeah, if you can do that in one, I wonder. Yeah, I mean a lot of the sections of Celeste can be pretty difficult, but the game doesn't feel like unfair. I feel like I feel like that. like it's yeah, because generally you know what you need to do to like beat the level or like the section. Which I think is important for a latest game. Because I think if you didn't feel that, then like just struggling against, if you didn't like know what you had to do, uh, then I think it would just make it a lot less fun. It would make, because it would make it feel a lot like, it would make it just feel unfair. I think yeah, is the best way to put it. I mean, the other important thing is that it doesn't feel like it, like, punishes you arbitrarily for, like, messing out. Which is something that I kind of found, uh, with, like, junking stuff in that kind of game. Which sometimes it feels like, oh, I was, like, that, it's, uh, like, it's, it sometimes feels like, uh, it just, like, slipped and stuff. Uh, and that kind of thing. And, like, oh, well, now I'm just... It's like a slight mess up, and then I'm getting all the way back to the beginning. Uh, where in here, because you only just go back to the, like, section, it doesn't feel nearly as punishing, which makes it a lot, like, more chill and a lot funner, I think, or more fun. I mean, of course, like, the difficulty and, like, punishing nature of Jump King, getting over it and all that is, like, their appeal. So it's a very, like, it's a different audience, of which I am not really a part of, I would say. It's, like, si similar audience to, like, the Souls people, I think. Uh, which I've played a bit of Souls games and stuff. Uh, I don't mind them, but they're not for me, uh, and stuff, but like, I, I, at some point eventually, uh, might fun to do, like, Elden Ring on stream, or, like, Dark Souls on stream, Bloodborne, something like that, uh, I, part of the problem is I don't really have, uh, a lot of the Souls games, like, I mainly, the one, like, the, of the, like, Dark Souls, uh, like, one and stuff, I play that out, like, at, like, a friend's. Uh, I do have Elden Ring and, uh, Sekiro, uh, but I think that's actually it. And so I'd have to, like, buy them, for streaming them, and, uh, they're a bit expensive. Uh, and so I'd rather get stuff to improve, uh, why well, I, I have to obviously have money and stuff for like university things and that kind of thing, uh, and like university life, uh, but also improving the stream uh, quality and like audio quality and all that kind of stuff, 
uh, is something I want to be working on. And it's not exactly uh, cheap, either. which means I need to be uh, saving up a bit for that kind of stuff, which is something that I'm not great at normally, and so probably no Dark Souls and stuff streams for a bit, because of that. but it is like on my games to stream eventually. Yes. Cause like, but like, I want to get a mic, uh, like a proper good mic first is my big thing, uh, and that kind of stuff, uh, like set up beforehand. Uh, and then, uh, like maybe get just like a better like, uh, like a mission as PNG model. I've one that's like it's fairly cheap. Uh, that I have mind, but I already like it. Uh, but I still gotta save up and stuff. So yeah, alright, I'll try to boost the audio and stuff. Uh, some of that I'll have to try to do, like, I think off stream and update, I guess. From, part of the problem is I don't really know my shit when it comes to, like, a lot of tech stuff, uh, and, like, computer stuff, which makes it a bit more difficult, uh, overall. Uh, but, uh, so, like, a lot of, like, with, uh, setting up OBS and all that stuff is like first hand first time experience uh with some of that stuff. Uh which is why like there's a lot of scuff generally. Uh but I do like there are like I think like my mic's fine, I think, but I do like just because of the kind of the quality of stuff I wanna have, I want it to be a bit better. Uh and that kind of thing. Uh, overall, yeah, it's like serviceable. I feel like, and uh, for like other stuff, it works fine. But it's just like you know, there's always like the want to improve and that kind of thing. So my current focus is saving up on like stuff for that, saving up for stuff for uni, and unfortunately not really on uh, games and stuff at the moment, uh, which is all right because I do have like a large uh, catalog of games and stuff to play and stuff, but it just means that some games, uh, like some of the Dark Souls games and that kind of thing, are uh, not options at the moment, but they're definitely. Uh, stuff that are like on my list of games I want to do in the future. So many th oh yeah, always so many things to buy. Yeah, I found it to be particularly like a problem for me because I'm, uh, like I said, pretty susceptible to like impulse purchasing and stuff. Uh, partly because like just ADHD and that kind of thing, uh, but also just I think just in general. Uh, so I have to be like pretty careful uh, and. 
stuff on that and trying to avoid like continuing that trend because it's been a problem in the past and stuff for me On the other hand, I don't really eat that much, so, uh, expenses for food, I think, are generally pretty low for me, and that kind of thing. Uh, cause, like, I, my appetite is, like, generally non-existent. Which I'm choosing to see as a benefit, and not indicative of, uh, other issues. <laughs> I'll see how much that uh, really has an effect probably in the future uh, with the prices of everything going up these days. But yeah, it's very tempting for like a lot of games. Like, there's the new uh, The Last of Us is coming out to PC, and that's very tempting at the moment. try and avoid letting my impulses win in that area. Because, like, my family and stuff is generally, like, fair to war, where it's not, like, a big concern. Like, I'm not in, like, dire financial situations or anything. Uh, and I'm, like, lived a very fortunate life. Uh, but... Uh, for me personally, still, yeah, that's that like money's not really mine, and so, uh, like obviously, uh, we're well, not not really just not mine. Uh, it's my family's, and so I don't want to be like a burden and stuff, and like a uh, money thing. <laughs> Am I supposed to have keep two dashes for that? No, it was only one, right? I don't think I can do it with two. Oh, no, actually, no, I had two there. So you can get two. What do you do here? Can you make it? Oh, you can. But yeah, basically where I'm at is I'm not buying anything except for the essentials for uh, at least like another month probably. Uh, and then now I'm going to see about like where I'm at there and get some stuff probably for uh, improving like stream quality and that kind of thing. Uh, and then look into like, games and stuff after that. But I do, like, enjoy this. Uh, and I find it's generally a good opportunity for me to get out of my comfort zone with, like, chatting to people and stuff, because I'm not the most social person uh, normally, uh, even online. Though no, it's been a bit of it. So, like, stuff like this, I find is 
a nice way to at least attempt it. I mean, I think in some ways that's part of, like, a big part of the benefit of, like, uh, like, I think part of, a big part of the benefit of what, uh, like, flavor and stuff in particular is kind of shown is that it is possible and to use, like, uh, PNGs and stuff, uh, including, like, AI or ones, uh, for streaming and stuff and to do, like, all right there. And at least, like, find a couple people and stuff, uh, and enjoy yourself. I think that's, like, important, uh, as a cost, uh, like, it, allow, having that, uh, like, ease of access, I guess, uh, I'm not, yeah, accessibility, yeah, uh, for people, I think is a really good thing, in general. Because it, you know, allows people who are not as comfortable, like, showing their face and stuff. Uh, in particular, uh, you may not have, like, a camera, for whatever reason, or, like, uh, that kind of thing, uh, to still have access to, like, playing games on the internet, uh, on a stream and stuff, uh, which they might not otherwise have as decent access to, or, like, uh, as appropriate a medium. Yeah. Like, that's kind of, like, yeah, go, going on to, like, AAR from here, I think the accessibility is, uh, for me, the biggest thing. I think, like, I, I'm not an artist. I'm very bad at art, uh, essentially stick figure level, I would say. Uh, yeah. And I've kind of, like, accepted that I probably could try to get better and stuff, uh, obviously. Like, a lot of it is just practice and that kind of thing. Uh, but overall, I think the big thing about AI is, I mean, without it, I really just wouldn't be doing this, probably. Uh, because even just for, like, thumbnails and stuff for this uh, makes it so much easier. Uh, and also, like, it just helps uh, visualize ideas and stuff uh, a lot easier for those of us who... Uh, either are not like artistically uh, like talented uh, can't afford to like commission something and uh, that kind of thing so I think by uh, being so accessible and easy to use I think that's the big benefit uh, but I do think that there is like obviously a downside stuff like I'm personally friends with a lot of like artists and stuff uh, and so, like, I can totally understand the concern there of, uh, like, it taking jobs, uh, it, like, and, uh, the copying and stuff and all the concerns there. I think that's a big problem. And so, personally, my stance is kind of, as long as it's being used purely as, like, a tool, uh, for, like, accessibility, I think I have no problems with it there. Uh, I think, like, when it, I basically I have problems when it, when you're claiming it's, like, the same as, like, tr more traditional, like, digital arts and that kind of thing, uh, like, done by a person. I think it's just objectively not really at the same level. I think it's disingenuous to claim that it is. Uh, not just, like, quality-wise, but also, like, uh, in terms of like difficulty making it and all that stuff. Uh, I think I also would personally have a problem with uh, if you're trying to like monetize it, like I think selling uh, the art made by the AI 
I think, is at very least bad form, and also selling, I think, the tools as well, I generally have an issue with, like, uh, you know, like, Novoi AI and stuff, like, charging to be, to use the software, and that kind of thing, I think is also bad, because it's the monetization of AI art, which I think is generally not a good thing, because it goes against, like, the big reason why I've been supportive, which is accessibility, by, like, adding a price tag to it. Which is, you know, in the, yeah, it's just like objectively like opposed to it. Uh, yeah, so I think like if you're not monetizing it, uh, like if you're not monetizing AI art, uh, if you're not like claiming it's like the same as like art made by a person, then I think that's like fine to use it like as you see fit for like. Uh, creative stuff like or like just expressing uh, how to, expressing like putting ideas into like a digital form for lack of a better way like yeah providing like a medium to do that I think it's really good uh, and I that's, that should be the main use case but I think like novel AI and stuff Yeah, I think people get Streamlabs donations using AI or characters, technically monetization and stuff. But I think, uh, I think it is a bit different with, uh, like, streamers using AI stuff. Because I, I, I think a decent amount of, uh, or at least I like to think a decent amount of, uh, streamer success and stuff is, uh, viewers and stuff appreciating, like, the personality and the streamer themselves. And that that's kind of what they're selling. Uh, is not just the model, or just not just the art, uh, behind, like in front, but also the person behind it and the personality and uh, like I guess vibe and stuff of the person. Uh, so for like stream donations and stuff, I personally I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but it is it's a bit of a gray area. Uh, yeah, so like I don't like. Uh, yeah, so like if. A streamer like if I were to be getting donation stuff I mean obviously there's a bit of bias there and stuff because be me. I don't think that's that because I like to think that it's uh, because not because of the art itself uh, but selling the art is super shifty and I think the big thing personally for me is monetizing the process is really shifty because like it goes against the accessibility which is the big benefit of uh, AI art Yeah, 15 years ago, people would serve money for a stream of video game. I mean, yeah, it's. I would say it. It does feel a bit different uh, in that case because, uh, like, recording video games, uh, streaming video games, and stuff. Uh, you, like, let's say recordings, uh, because there's like not really interaction with uh, like a chat or anything in that. Uh, so, but even for that, there's like a level of time uh, and you know like skill and effort put into that which I think is different than putting prompts and stuff into like an AI uh, to do it and so I think that's kind of the, the crux of it for me uh, is like it's not really like it's not a substantial commitment of effort to do it, to do this, uh, like, create AI art. Uh, and so, like, it's not, it should not be worth money. Whereas, like, recording a video and stuff, even if it's just, like, unedited gameplay, uh, that is still, like, you're taking the time and energy and effort to play the game, and I think that is worth, uh, at least giving them the opportunity to make money if people enjoy watching the gameplay. Whereas, like, yeah, yeah, putting in a prompts and stuff, it really just does not take a lot of time, uh, 
like as I know firsthand from doing it a fair bit. Uh, and it doesn't seem like a uh, the effort put into doing it should really be worth paying people. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is like a very complicated issue that I don't fully understand, and, uh, yeah. And obviously, like, by streaming and stuff, I've benefited from the existence of AI art a fair bit. Uh, not really monetarily, but, like, in terms of, like, being able to use it for this and just, uh, like, enjoyment and stuff I get out of streaming and that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm a bit biased towards it, probably. Uh, yeah. For what, like, for what that's worth, I guess. As for the argument of, like, the copyrights and stuff, uh, personally, I'm of the stance that, uh, it shouldn't be, like, copyrightable, I don't think. Uh, because, like, it's, uh, like, it shouldn't be copyrightable initially. If you do something with it, like, make a character, uh, or use it to make, like, further media around it and that kind of thing, and, like, actively use, uh, the ideas, concepts, and stuff, uh, then I think that that is different. Uh, but if you're just, like, uh, creating AI art, I don't think it should be copyrightable in itself, uh, just perhaps, like, the ideas behind it, uh, behind the character that you're making, or whatever, uh, should be. Because I think copywriting it, again, just goes against, like, the accessibility, I think. Yeah, it takes more effort to make a game, less effort to play a game, at the end of the day, if someone sells AI art, it's labeled as such, and someone wants to buy it, it's hard to stop. Oh, that's another thing. If, uh, labeling it, I think, uh, labeling it, I think, is also, like, I would, I would say that would lead to me not minding nearly as much, uh, if it's properly labeled and stuff. Uh, because if you know what you're getting into and stuff, uh, that's a bit different. I won't have, like, a ton of respect for that. I wouldn't, I'm not sure whether I could consider the person who's selling AI art, like, an artist or anything, if they're an art dealer Perhaps as like a label and stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't really have as much of a problem with like selling it in that regard. If you're like properly labeling it, it's more like if you're passing it off as proper art and that kind of thing. Uh, AR programs could sell business license programs like other apps do. Like you can only use this program for your business if you buy the business version. A lot of companies already do that. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing, I personally am against uh, just the monetization of the programs, most of all. Like, I really, I, that's my stance, is that they shouldn't be monetized because, like, of accessibility in terms. And I think it's, that's not the worst idea, I suppose, because uh, if provided you're still giving access uh, to people to use it on, like, uh, just a personal uh level and not like a commercial level then i guess that's fine uh but i still feel like uh it's i mean that, that's complicated uh whether like business licenses and stuff uh because then like you get to a certain point of at uh, what point is it commercial use and what point isn't it and all that uh and that kind of thing yeah a tiering system would be good but as i think as long as there is like th as long as the bottom tier is not losing out on feature i think is my big thing if you're like you have the same access to the system and the program and the code and stuff and like you can make the same you can theoretically make the same art that the companies are doing with what you're getting as the free uh system 
then I don't have a problem with it. If they're charging company, if you just can't use the what you make uh, commercially without getting like a cease and desist or a lawsuit or s something like that, uh, then that's fine to me. But it, where I take issue is with like how like Novway I and stuff does it, where uh, to get like higher quality images, more images, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then I think that's like a problem if you're like having to pay more to just get better quality out of the program. Then I think that's where it becomes like an issue to me. Uh, but otherwise, I think like their business license that generally seems like a pretty good idea uh, for like how to get a torque. Because uh, again, like I understand that the people behind the programs and stuff need to make money. Uh, and I'm, you know, somewhat sympathetic to that, uh, as long as they're, like, doing that in a way that is not impede the accessibility to, like, the everyday user who's not using it for, like, a business or for commercial use, then I don't have a problem with them, like, getting money from sending it to businesses, as long as you're getting the same product, just different, like, license agreements about it. I hope that makes a bit of sense there. But it is like it just a, it's a really complicated issue because we haven't even talked about like the stuff around the um, potential problems with like the source material the AI is basing off of stuff. I I'm not going to get into that because I just don't know enough about it. Uh, just to say anything for sure. Like I'm just not is not my area of expertise, and I haven't read into it like enough. But yeah, that's kind of like overall my take on AI art. Which is uh, definitely like a bit bias because of like how much I've been using it recently and stuff uh, for like personal stuff where it's that like that 100% contributes to wanting the tool itself to be completely like freely accessible and having it just be like licensing that is what is uh, being paid for uh, because obviously that would benefit me tremendously, uh, because I'm not, you know, it's not commercial use, uh, it's just personal use now. Alright, well we beat the game, which is nice. This, I think, right, this is my second time uh, beating the game overall. Uh, always the first on stream and stuff. Uh, there is an epilogue and stuff still, I think. Uh, but I, it is, uh, we've hit the two hour mark. Uh, and I think I am going to end it around here. Uh, I will be streaming tomorrow at five again. Uh, not, still not 100% sure I'm going to be streaming, I, 
probably Final Fantasy XIV or more Hollow Knight. Uh, yeah, like one hour for move the pauses. Yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah, so gonna be streaming tomorrow, 5 p.m. Uh, as for next week, uh, I'm not sure when I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be streaming Tuesday next week uh, at 5 p.m. Uh, but I, I know I can't stream Friday at 5 p.m. or and probably not Saturday 5 p.m. either because I'm gonna be uh, going back uh, to visit family for uh, reading week. Uh, but I will do my best to stream uh, Wednesday if possible and then do some guerrilla streams over the course of uh, reading week, which is uh, the week after next. Uh, I'm prob I'm also th considering swapping like the specific time slot I do just because I know a lot of people have been streaming at f and fl flavor and stuff have been streaming at five and I don't wanna um, like stream over them and stuff because I can be fairly flexible because uh, being a university and stuff I don't have like a job that's like until five from like you know like a, I don't have like a nine to five. Uh, so I can stream earlier in the day and I like just between classes and stuff uh, So it makes more sense for like me to be flexible in comparison to like others if I'm don't want to like schedule over them and stuff uh, Hope that makes sense and that you were able to you guys are able to understand something from that ramble, but uh, TRDR I'm the only stream I can confirm for next week is going to be Tuesday, uh, but I'll do my best to stream uh, additional times that week. But I, I just can't promise anything for certain. Uh, and I'll also be streaming tomorrow at 5. Alright, uh, I'm going to end it now. Uh, flavor, I have a deal with Flavor Flav. If not, have you consider approaching him? Uh, not really, uh, to my knowledge, but I don't have full knowledge of the whole thing. Uh, also, thanks for showing up, uh, Charlie, for the last bit. Uh, nice seeing you. Uh, have you considered approaching him? Not to my knowledge, but I can ask around and see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to end it here. Uh, thank you so much. I'll see if anyone else is streaming first. Just so I can, like, send you all in the direction. Dr. Lolly May is streaming Fallout New Vegas right now. Uh, Minta is streaming, t uh, that's tomorrow. Uh, I think that's the only uh, waiting room up at the moment uh, for today, it looks like. Yeah, but I'm there. There might be more uh, later that I'm just not aware of today. So uh, just keep an eye out on Twitter and stuff. Uh, thank you all for coming. Hope you have great uh, days and great weekends. Stuff, and I hope to see you next time. Uh, bye.